Hello fellow gamers, I'm your host Brit Justice. Welcome back to my gaming channel Justice Gaming and I am in a Star Trek Resurgence to continue my playthrough. Uh, this will not be a very long intro, I want to get right into the game. First of all, just want to say again a big shout out and thank you to everybody who has been watching these videos and who has left comments. I read every single comment, so thank you so much for your feedback and thank you for taking your time to watch these videos. In the last one, we had uh, quite a bit of uh, important choices to make there, and probably some that I regret. Things didn't quite go out the way that I had intended. I did talk about that at the end of the last video. And in a replay, I would do things differently, absolutely. I would make different choices, for sure. Uh, I still stand by making Ermot Commander. Uh, in, at least in this particular playthrough, in this playthrough, uh, he seemed like the right candidate. Uh, even though uh, people did mention, and I will uh, definitely shout out to everybody who mentioned this, thank you. Westbrook had been looked over quite a bit as captain. Uh, he was passed over a couple of times apparently. But in my opinion, if you're passed over, then there's reason for that. Even if he's technically the next in line by the hierarchy, he is still, uh, in my opinion, a little unstable. And also, if he was passed over, then that means he wasn't fit for the job. And to me, it's not about so much the rank. It's about, are you fit for the job? Do you match the job type? Are you able to pull off the job well? And a, being first officer is an extremely important job on the ship. I felt Ermot was the best. I'm not going to dive into that too much right now. I did talk about that before, and I'll probably talk about that more in my gameplay review summary. But that's just a basic overall summary from the last video. I don't want to make this go on too long, so let's jump into this no-win scenario. Let's uh, let's see what happens. I don't know if this will be the last video or not, but we'll find out. Right into it. We are in battle. The Drosian came back. I'm here what do you know? And the crew. Not for you. Uh, um, do your job. Your place. timing is perfect. Let's you give her a little, uh, your timing's perfect. a little, uh, uplift now, here. There you go. Yeah, we're just They're gonna ex Okay, she, she enjoyed that. Let's just keep everybody happy right now. We the need her help. Can't avoid the bioforming ray. Whoa, they're hitting us again. Oh, another ship. What ship is that? Who is they're that? Here. Lots of ships. Wow. Starfleet coming to the rescue. Now that's what I like to see. And it's the Titan. What's that's what I thought. It looked like the Titan. Sorry to keep you waiting, we got Captain Riker. Got as as it's could. about time. Boy, are Looks we like glad to see you. With this monster. We're damn glad to see you, Captain. We could use all the help we can get. I told you I'd be here. So, what are we up against? They're powering up for another attack. We have to warn them. Open a channel to all Starfleet ships immediately. Starting emergency transmission. Yeah, you can't let it hit your ship. Because that Rydek will be bad. The, USS Resolute. the ship we're fighting is armed with a bioforming ray that can transform your entire crew instantaneously. Avoid being hit at all costs. And remember, they have our shield algorithms, so take preemptive evasive action. Uh, I just want to take a moment to pause because we jumped right into this so fast. I know some people don't like me pausing so much here, uh, but I like to do this because this is one of those stories where the choices you make change outcomes and the people's perception of you changes things. So I want to uh, I want to read all that and I want to see. I mean, I'm playing this for immersion. I'm playing this for the gameplay experience. I'm playing this for the story. So I want to see how the story plays out. It's my first time playing it, so I have to know that. Um, but I just want to take a moment to pause here and, and say, hope you all are having a blessed day today. Let me know what you're drinking down below. I've got a hot coffee I just made in front of me, so I'm excited and ready to get into gameplay. 
today. And boy, did they just thrust us right into action here. And also, I don't know if this will end up being the last video for this. I don't know how many hours are left in the game. If this is the last video for this playthrough, uh, stay tuned toward the end of the video. I will do a full gameplay review of the game. But let's get back into it. It's action time, everybody. Oh, and I am going to read what Riker, Riker and Bedrosian. When she returned to the bridge in the heat of the final battle, Lieutenant Bedrosian was glad to hear Jara express how much her help was needed and appreciated. I w in that moment, I wanted to bring her an uplift. I wanted to uplift her spirits because we do need her help, even though she was going to quit. Hey, she's back now. If she wants to quit after that, okay, fine. But right now, we need her help, so let's stick with it. And let's see what Riker says. After Captain Riker arrived at the head of the Starfleet Armada for the climatic battle, he was pleased when Jara sounded so grateful. And that's also what I wanted to do there. I wanted him to be pleased. And again, this reinforces my idea that we needed to contact Starfleet the whole time. Absolutely tell them about this. All right, let's get back it's into it. It's only a matter of time before they get their bearings. When they do, they're going to turn against us. The sooner we attack them, the better. Ooh, do I? All we strike first. I need an alternative. We can't assume anything yet. I need alternatives. I can't attack another Federation ship. I need alternatives. Full impulse power. Take us in for a closer look. Aye, Captain. Yeah, they might have been hit, but we're not just going to attack a ship till we have reason or cause to do so. Nope. Now we can shoot them. <laughs> now we can shoot him. I that's think that's not a proof. Starfleet ship. The Tacon have yep. shields at full power. Uh, yeah, well that proves it, doesn't it? Shields are holding against the Pawtucket's attack. Fire for now at least. Okay, we know phasers did not do anything before, so now it's photon torpedo time. We're doing photon torpedoes. Maybe this is a bad decision, but I'm going to do it cuz we did phasers last time on the Ophelia and it didn't do anything. Photon. Oh, Fire I didn't. Phasers. Well, I didn't Firing. mean to choose that. I meant to choose torpedoes. Oops. Oh well. I guess it worked. Maybe not enough. Well, they shot torpedoes Heavy at us. In Evasive. No. Fire everything we got this time. Let's go at them. Hit them with everything we've got. I, Captain. We have to stop them this time. We have to. Shields now at 40%. Stay with it. Keep firing. Okay, I think we disabled him. See, that's that's good. All right. Evasive maneuvers would not have disabled them. The weapon them. systems are offline. Captain, I suggest we minimize the collateral damage. Destroy their engines and we can turn our focus to the Ophelia. Yeah, I agree with that. It's Cripple the most prudent it. thing to do. Oh no, I could destroy it. I'm not going to. They would do the same in not, situation. Not not destroying reversed. it. Absolutely not. I'm crippling it. Take out their engines. Fire when ready. Targeting their engines. Commencing fire. Now. Yeah, we're not killing everybody on board. That we're not doing. Okay, we got several more ships bioformed. Holy crap. And that was fast, too. How are we going to beat this, guys? How? How in the world are we going to beat this? any one of us to take one alone. Collectively, we might just have a shot. On our way. Full impulse power. Aye, Captain. And they are too powerful for us. They really are. Attack engines, attack bridge, attack... Let's attack the bioforming array. If we can get rid of the bioforming array, that's the main thing that's causing us problems here. Target the bioforming ray. Fire photon torpedoes. Firing photon That's what torpedoes. we have to go after first. Crap, man. I've lost helm control. Trying to reestablish. Weapons and defensive systems are down too. Engine output remains consistent, but it's not reaching its destination. This is what happened to the Enterprise. They're draining our energy. Right. Caught in it too. 
the away team find some way to help. Okay, I think it's down to Carter now. Carter's team is going to have to do something. We need to disable that energy beam. That's what we need to do. If we can somehow disable that energy draining siphon, I think that's the thing. The hammer or the anvil. There's a way to disable the avilium. It's there. We strike at the heart. Find the cartabula. Yeah, we got to take out the cartabula. Makes sense. Let's talk to Portal, I guess. It's, all, it's the only person we can talk to. The cartabula. I can feel the energy. Don't get too used to it. We're going to take that thing down. <clears throat> well, okay. Let's see. Climb the cliff face. We're doing this the old-fashioned way. Climbing up. And of course, we're being followed. Yeah, how are we going to take out the Cartabula? Do we even have a plan? I guess to con, I mean, uh, Portal 6-3 could do it. Turn it off. This looks dangerous. <laughs> I don't know that I want to go in there. to turn off this energy field to enter. I must do it. It requires the hands of a Tacom. Of course. Is it working? It started. Is the opening wide enough to get through? Well, is it wide enough? No, but I can see the cartabula. What about now? Better. Okay, we are walking, everybody. Ah, I still can't get in. Stand back. I'll try again. Of course, we got a firefight going on. I mean, they're not going to make it easy. Oh, look who's here. And she's alive. It's Miranda. And she has a glove, too. That's not good. I'm not going to remind you of the oath you took. I want you to remember why you made it. Your bond to your people. The Scions of the Flame are not his people. We, we already know that. We've already established that. Let's go. Come on. You can bring your we know back, that. And all you have to do is nothing. Stand back and we will handle them. He is... I, I don't think he will. I think he'll help us. So much time doing nothing. I think he's going to help us. We've convinced him at this point. Whoa. Alright, he's gone Super Saiyan mode on us. Uh, we'll, we will help you. Wait. We'll help you. Stay here. You need to be ready to open the energy field with me. You can't take them all on yourself. I am a guardian of the Dakon Empire. I could take an army of them. Wow, I didn't know he was that powerful. But this is pretty awesome. <laughs> this is really pretty awesome. We'll hold the line. Dang, look at him go. It's like flying and stuff. 
Dang, look at him go. This is incredible. He's using the rocks, the crystals, and everything. The gap isn't much wider. Can we get through? Maybe. Maybe we can widen it with a containment field from the tricorder. Uh huh. Do it. Oh. I don't think we can crowbar our way in. It takes a con to do it. Miranda? Wait. Could Miranda help us? Well, that's not fun. But why would she help? No, she's not going to help us. That'd be ridiculous. And she's killing us all. We could force her to do it. But how would we force her to do it? Wah. Carter's dead. Oops. I'm going to retry without story mode first. I hit D. I don't know what happened there. I did hit D. So we'll try it first without story mode. D, I'm doing D. Yeah, I did D. I don't know why it didn't. Uh, I don't know why it didn't register That's the first time. Enough. I guess I didn't do it fast enough. Okay, I'll put her in. Okay, she's doing flips. <laughs> she is flipping out. Carter, I could have killed you both easily. But the part of me that is still Miranda won't let me. Oh, that tells me there is a part of them in there. Compels me to bring you into the fold. Okay, so we know Miranda doesn't want that. You have to attack Miranda. Miranda doesn't want that. Trust me. This is the best outcome you can hope for. I know Miranda wouldn't want that. Miranda wouldn't want that. You don't know her like I do. Well, she's mad at me again. I want to see why she's mad at me, so let me just do this real quick. Carter continued to refuse to join the sign of the flame and took it as a sign the relationship simply wasn't meant to be after all. What would what, what how, I mean if Miranda is really in there her personality she wouldn't want that for Carter right right What's going to happen here okay we got something to do grab device or her tackle tackle <laughs> I guess. Punch. <laughs> Punch her. She blocked it. Soon you'll understand. Okay, what's going on? Slow motion. Heartbeat. Gun. Oh, do we shoot her? Do we fire on her? Or use... Oh, we have this, the stuff, right? Oh, I'm going to use a deridium. Obviously. Because maybe then she can help us take it down the uh, force field. That's my idea here. Use the deridium. Oh, it was on myself. I thought it was going to use it on her. Finally. Finally, we can be but... Oh, she's dead anyway. Okay, a lot just ha a lot just happened there. So yes, we were stabbed, but now we have to con powers, right? So now we can lower the force field. So yeah, I mean, the Deridium should slow it down, right? That's the idea. It won't stop it completely, but it will slow it down. Which will give us the time to open the uh, thing. I thought when I was selecting that, it was... I thought it was going to uh, put, inject her with it, but I was wrong. It's going to inject him. So for right now, I have rejected it. Are you all right? Carter, I'm sorry. 
sorry I hesitated. But she's dead now. Keep her from getting you. Don't blame yourself. If I just shot her sooner. It's okay. I don't blame you. Well, that made Edsler happy. I can't believe Miranda's dead, though. Wow. She's really gone. I thought there was still a part of her inside there that I could have saved. I don't know. Oh, good. Ah. Uh, should I say I loved her? Her suffering is over. It had to end this way. She was suffering. And now it's over. We didn't have a lot of time to build a loving relationship. That's my only reason why I didn't choose that. We didn't have a whole lot of time to develop that relationship. She was taken over by a Takan very early in the game. Oh my gosh. He's messed up. Oh, he took them all out, though. Not all of them. Miranda got Carter. You have Taconian blood now. You must go and finish this. Wow, is Portal 6-3 going to die? That's pretty wild right there. So he can die. I've learned that. He is some kind of bio life form. He can die. That answers a big question I had about Portal 6-3. And yes, because we are now bioformed somewhat, we have Taconian blood and we can do this thing. Which is cool. But eventually they will take over. We have this Deridium. I don't know how long it's going to last. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is this... Who are you? Shut up, Tell you're nothing. No. I'm in charge, I buddy. It. You're talking to the guy that's in charge. Pipe down while I'm at work. Carter, you're kind of scary. Yeah, this won't last forever. It's okay. But let's do this quickly. Come on, pick up, pick it up. Let's go. Come on, you're 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 stalling here. Let's go. Reach the Cartabula. Very good. Are you all right? Yeah, we're inside. That's what matters. Okay, we are inside the Cartabula, but now we're back to this battle, a united front. Look at these ships battle. This is incredible. Look at that. This is great. This is a Star Trek I love. Look at this go. Look at them go. Two of ours are keeping the bioform ships at bay, but they can't hold them off forever. I'm receiving tricorder transmissions from the away team. They're picking up our warp core resonant frequency within the Aphelion. They're bleeding us dry. But they're not just taking our power, they're routing it through the Cartabula. Oh, interesting. So it like powers it, or gives it more power. Find the manual control console. Are you a control console? Are you a control console? I gotta hold it in there. This is hard. It's fighting me. It's fighting me. Oh wow, is it fighting me? back. Man, this story is just so cool. Let's go.
There. That's the Resolute's warp core resonant frequency. And these others? I guess I have to select them all. That frequency matches the Titan's warp core resonance. And this one? And these two are the Kimball and the Lowell. They're both Steamrunner class. Same engine platform. They're just tuned a little differently. I must be getting information from the bioforming, but this warning. It means that it's struggling with the power stacked up at close frequencies. The Cartabula can't handle the dissonance? Maybe. From to away team, are you reading these Starfleet engine signatures? We are. And you need to see this. The Steam Runner class frequencies are causing problems for the Aphelion's energy source. Really? I'm sending visuals now. Huh, so it, like, can't handle it. They're vulnerable. We have to use this. Captain. If they want to take all of our power, give I them more power. Give it to them. Overload them. How? If we and the other Starfleet ships work together and send maximum warp output tuned to those same frequencies, it could overload their core. There you go. That's what I was thinking. Overload it. Give them all the power. To the theory. But if we attempt this, it would. We need all ships to join. Action. I wouldn't risk this ship without good reason. If this is going to succeed, we'll need all Starfleet ships to pitch in. We aren't alone anymore. We need to leverage that. I will create a high energy static warp shell. We'll need the away team to Hey, they did that in a uh, TNG really last episode. A faith in us, Captain. That's a hell of a plan. You've got this. We don't want to let you down. I've got faith in you and the rest of this crew. Now let's give them Static help. warp shell. They did that yes, at Captain. the uh, last episode of TNG. I found an eject routine for the Cartabula. So we can disengage it, just like we did with the Zeldi's warp cores. Yeah, but it'll only activate if this thing gets completely overloaded. So we gotta take it right up to the edge of destruction. Yes. We are increasing the warp overload it. frequency now. Uh oh. We are fighting. You will destroy everything I've waited for. Fighting the uh, Taconian. If that thing wants to take over, it's going to have to go through the both of us. And I'm not going to let that happen. I can count you on me? you. I'm going to fight it right along with you, Carter. I can always count on you. You'll stand by me to the end. This isn't the end. Is something wrong? It might be. I don't no, know. No, we're, we're fine. Do you see our output frequency changing? We do. What is the impact on the Aphelion systems? It's not enough. It's not enough. We need to push this thing harder. We need more power. Inertial dampeners are failing. Still being drained to the Aphelion, so that part of the plan is working. Now we need the others to join us. That's right. We need all the ships. Open a channel to anyone left on our side. Opening a channel. This is the Resolute. We're sending instructions to all ships to output maximum warp power at the designated frequency. That's what I thought we were going to we do in the first place, though. The Aphelion. Should have already we done that. that. All we know is that will siphon off our energy much quicker. Oh, come on. Trust us. You're leading us to disaster. Yeah, well, it's the right Are choice. Unity is our strength. Just follow us. Greed is exactly our weakness. What they want. You can't just Unity? I don't know what the best answer there is. Our strength in Starfleet comes from our ability to work together. But that sounds like a good idea. Especially when everything is on the line. I can get behind that, Captain Rydek. We're adjusting the Titan's warp output to match the resolutes. That's right. We should all do that. Let's go, everybody. Come on. I suggest the rest of you do the same. The 
others are joining us. Good. Wonder if you could have failed that or this like had them not ship. join us. I don't know. Adjusting our engines now. But she's doing it, so we're good. I convinced them all. Counteracting our interference. But some of these other frequencies are causing spikes too. I'm gonna find a new target range for the resolute. Alright, I gotta hold it in there. And did I do it? Try this out. Um oh, where do I go? Down here. Here. This one's hitting the hardest. If they all converge here, it'll provide the maximum disruption to the Cartabula. Got it. We want to overload this thing, push it to the brink, but not past it. I like how sure also this is our lower decks, like engineering if people. We go too far. We won't just be destroying the Cartabula. We're going to take a lot more with us. Have faith. <laughs> don't want to be responsible for that. Sometimes you just gotta go on faith, Millie. I have faith in you. That's enough. Sending data to the Resolute. Yeah, I like that it's our lower decks, like engineering team, science, well, engineering, that is uh, d working this problem. Very, 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 uh, if we try Very to good. that frequency, we will generate a harmonic imbalance of our own and risk a warp core breach. Well, let's not do that. I must warn you, these are precisely the engine conditions that Captain Solano's experiment brought about. Yeah, this time we don't have a choice, though. We have to do it. I mean, what are you going to do? Just get taken over by the sign of the flame? I think not. I mean, we have no choice. I'm a not Solano. Reaction is a dangerous possibility right now. You can handle it. We can eject the warp core if it comes to that. You can handle it. Is my order beyond your ability to execute? Then you will follow it. We're all counting on you. I uh, kind of put it on yes, his shoulders. Captain. I'm maybe I should have said although he did like that. Maybe I should have said I'm not Solano, but I kind of put that responsibility on his shoulders. I guess I guess that was okay though. It worked in the end. It's not going to eject. We have to disengage the cartabula manually. Oh boy. We lit this fuse. We've got to make sure it doesn't go off the wrong way. If we can pull hard enough on those levers, it'll dislodge this thing. Stop the cartabula from overloading. Release. <laughs> Uh, I'm hitting all the wrong buttons right now. There we go. Oh, things are turning red. Red is means you're dead. Red is dead. Well, hers is unlocked, but mine's not. Whoa. I have to fight. I have to fight this, uh, Taconian. Shoot. I think I failed. I was hitting S. Oh, she's helping me. Oh, you know what it was? I bet it was tricking me. 
I shouldn't have held S. I should have kept holding what I was doing, I bet. Ooh, how much you want to bet? How much you want to bet it was the Deconian tricking me? I was doing S, but maybe I shouldn't have done S. I should have done the W and kept that going. That could have been it. I don't know. Anyway, I think we just succeeded, so hooray. Full power restored. Okay, now we have to take out the bioforming beam. The bioforming beam has to be taken out. The Takan are running off reserve power now. Okay, so that we succeeded. Sort of. Not completely yet, but getting there. The most precious time. I saw what you did. The sacrifice you made. Radiation levels are spiking. It's coming from the Cartabula. He must have damaged it. Didn't get it out before it fractured. Well, that's not the worst outcome. It's cracked, but we're still here. We didn't rip a hole in space itself. So, not the worst that could have happened. <coughs> that's great, but it's still a problem. Three to beam back to the Resolute. Our transporters won't cut through the interference. We can't lock on. We can't stay here. All right, I guess we have to make a big escape now. Get out of this We're place somehow. Away in that thing. There. Maybe I can use this to get us out of here. I don't know if it can get us back to the Resolute, but we have to get away from here. My question is, how long do we have before Carter is taken over by the Taconian? Because he's still under, he's still got that in his system, right? So how, how long do we have? How long will that Deridium last? This is good, but we can do better. <coughs> and soon, I hope. Like, he certainly... All the way to the Resolute. He certainly cannot have a lot of time left. That Deridium stuff was supposed to be short-lived. And it's been a lot of time now. So I'm worried about that. A, shot on the a direct hit to its bridge will bring it down. It take us real close, Captain. Skim the hull of that thing where it can't get a clear shot at us. Or... Or... I can weave us through the battle. And hope we don't get caught in the crossfire. No, I say along. Damage. I'm gonna so go with... You want us to go closer to that thing. I'm gonna go with her. I'm gonna go with her Take suggestion. Us along the Aphelion's hull. Get us to the bridge as fast as you can. Aye, Captain. We're gonna try that. I've seen this kind of maneuver done before. Uh oh. I don't think we made it. We're almost in position for a shot at the bridge. Oh, we're almost there. Okay. Torpedoes armed and ready. <coughs> Break off this attack, or I will be forced to eradicate you. At this point, destroy him. Just destroy him. I don't care. <laughs> We're done. We're done. No more nice talking with him. No more nice talking. We have to take him out. Both living and waiting to be reborn. We're going to die in here if I don't care. We will never submit to your federation. We can help you, then you'll be destroyed. Oh, I, I want to say... Alright, I'm going to say we can help you because this is my first playthrough and I want to play it the Starfleet way. And a second playthrough I would do number two, then you'll be destroyed. This playthrough will do the number one. Radiation poisoning is a terrible way to go, but it doesn't have to be that way. We can render aid to your crew. Uh, no, we've crossed the eons to get here. I won't stop now. Alright, he didn't like that, but I did try to help him. I wonder why he doesn't like that. I just want to see real quick why he doesn't like that, but I did try to help him. you think that he would. Well, 
Oh, Galvin. Even when facing certain defeat, Galvin remained defiant to the end after refusing Jara's offer, offer to help him. Okay, whatever. Uh oh, hull integrity. Now the radiation is rising here too. Targeting the resolute. I can't let you. There we go. I was waiting for that. Get on. Damn it. I can't hold on to it. I have to make manual adjustments to enhance the signal pattern from here. What do you mean? I can't go. He's gonna have to stay. I'm not gonna make it out. No way. We're all leaving together. We've been through too much to split up now. I'm don't ordering you. It behind. has to be Got me. It. I don't have long to do this. I'm bioforming. It's happening, Nilly. I have to be the one to do it. Wow, powerful moment. But yeah, it has to be me. I have to be the one. Oh man. Because we have no way to, we have no way to help the bioforming process. We have no way to stop the bioforming process. It's an internal struggle. And he's losing. Not like this. It's the Takan. In my head. It's trying to keep me from sending you back. There has to be a way for you to- There isn't. The time is now. I mean, yeah, we don't have a way to stop the bioforming process. That's my thing here. We don't have the time. We don't that have a way to stop it. Work. I told you this body is mine. Nope, we're fighting it. We're fighting it. So I really am staying behind. I can't believe that. Really am staying behind. The away team has Whoa. Back. I didn't Your expect Carter to fire, go in this way. I don't want to taunt Galvin. Just finish it. Target their bridge. I don't need to taunt him. We did try to help him. We gave it our best. We really did. Fire. I didn't like having to do that, obviously, but didn't have a choice, so we had to. I gave him every opportunity. I really did give him every opportunity. Jara did. Even tried to help him at the end. Hey, this is what I can't believe right here. Carter is dying. I or not dying. Being taken over. And then I guess that's dying. And he's stuck on the Aphelion. We made Even a good if I team. Don't get to see you again. I couldn't have done this without you, Nilly. We made a hell of a team. Didn't we? The best. Incredible. Wow. To the end, though. Edsler was really. really the one we should have had a relationship with, I feel. We'll talk about that at the uh, end, do the big review for it, but... Okay, see, I can't... Oh, Carter is dead. Wow. I wonder if there was a different way that could play out or not, but I didn't expect that. We lost. So I guess we won't be playing as Carter anymore. Gosh, wow. That's an ending. I don't know if this is the ending, but that was that was unexpected. I didn't expect Carter would be dying, going on that away mission, and that would be the last where we'd ever see of him again. Wow. I had such high hopes for him. All decks secure. We have the bioformed on board, fully contained. The Starfleet ships under Takan control have signaled their surrender. 
Good work, Captain Wright. Wow. Next time I need some backup, I'll know who to call. We did lose people, though. I owe you one. I trust you won't have a problem with that. We'll be there. Just say the word, and we'll be there. I'm gonna hold you to that. Captain, we're being hailed. Oh wow. It's the Aphelion. On screen. <coughs> the radiation. We. <laughs> we won't last much longer in here. Please. We surrender. Yeah, let's try to save him. We need your help. Please, people support your We did offer that to Galvin, so. Captain, I must remind you that when an enemy is surrendered, it is our duty to render aid. I agree. Aid. I'm going to render aid. I've already made that you decision. You already offered help and they turned you down. Tried to destroy us. Ah, uh, she's Why reach bloodthirsty. Out to them again? No, I don't because agree with Pajorzian. The Off the rails. Ermot is right. Is I'm with Ermot. That's why I made him first com first officer. You can't do that. I made him first officer because of those that thinking. So that's why that backs up. Number one. I can say. Evacuate him. what separates us from them. The fact that we exactly can make that line peace, right there. After all our conflict. All that, all of that is why it shows Set that. Set up containment fields in the docking bay and beam the Takan there. That's the Starfleet Throw thing to do. Aphelion. We Shut did down it. all systems. Lower your defenses and prepare to be transported. Plus, imagine us. We could take over the Aphelion now. We could uh, take that back to a starbase and start studying it. Wouldn't that be awesome? Get an upgrade in technology using Takan technology. It's our ship now, basically. Right? Yeah, I mean, think about that. That's a big win for us, too, to take the Aphelion. Carter! Hey, I... Wait, what? Oh, oh. He's not dead, he's just taken over. Gotcha! Okay. What a twist! That's right, he didn't die. I thought he was dying at that moment, like the radiation was killing him. My first order of business... He's just taken over. ...establish the Hotari okay. government and resume peace talks. Genuine talks. With the Olivians. Taken over by the Takan. Who knows? I know I don't want to be queen. And we're There's resolving so things now? I could do with just a fraction of your medical technology if I could bring it to my people. But I also want to see what else is out there. Maybe there's even a place for me in Starfleet. It would be hard to stay on Hotari forever. Not with all there is to experience. Heal your learn. people. Start there first. There are many ways to help your people, and healing them is a very noble way to do so. Heal your I'll people. I'll see to it that Starfleet sends a medical ship to share knowledge and technology. That right there. As long as you'll be there to spearhead their efforts. That's how we bring people into the Federation. That's how we expand our positive influence in the galaxy we must attend to by doing that kind of stuff I can't thank you enough for all you've done I'll see you again boy do we have a lot to talk about for sure a lot to talk about hope I can remember it all Starfleet has granted me the privilege of conferring this upon you Ooh, am I getting an upgrade? Solano would rather have been the one offering this. I guess Solano is alive, but he's a Taconian. Look at that, I'm getting a promotion. A Captain Jara, go Jara. We need a sequel with Captain Jara. We absolutely need a sequel. I believe a great many wonders lie ahead for you, Jara Rydick. There appears to be nothing. But now what ship? What ship will we go? Thank you, Ambassador. Can't wait to see what's out there. Live long and prosper. Thank you, Ambassador, I guess. I don't know. Thank you, Ambassador Spock. For everything. It is you who stopped the spread of the Takan. I should be the one giving thanks. But that made him happy, so we're good. We kept Spock happy during all this. And and yes, I do think like Spock. Victory. I'm thinking like a uh, Peace. classic Starfleet officer. A cost. Wow. Man, was that a good game. For some, it requires putting aside centuries of enmity. Let's hear her out here. I'm going to keep quiet. For others, it takes facing complicated losses. To Carter. Hmm. How do you say goodbye to someone who isn't really gone? <sighs> I thought I knew how to leave the past behind, but uh, I've learned a thing or two. And for too many... 
they had to pay the ultimate price. In time, history may forget their sacrifices, but those of us who were there never will. Now, all hands honor the dead. Is there like an epilogue? Before we jump into, I guess, what is probably the epilogue, I want to go over where I stand with everybody finally, since now we've come to what seems like the end of that. So give me a, a couple of minutes here to just go over where we are with everybody so we can remind ourselves for our end. Captain Solano took Jara's actions as mutinous when she confronted him on the bridge and asked him to submit to a bioscan. Lieutenant Bedrosian was crushed when Jara ignored her advice and opted to rescue and, evac and, and evacuate the surviving Takan aboard the Aphelion. I don't agree with what Bedrosian wanted to do, so I'm okay with that. Ambassador Spock was left with the distinct impression Jara has a bright future with Starfleet after she expressed her gratitude for his contributions to the fight against the Scion of the Flame. Commander Westbrook was devastated to yet again be passed over for a promotion, yada yada, we saw that already, um, and her refusal to listen to reason only compounded, so we end with frustration on Westbrook. Tillis was eternally grateful for Jara's efforts on behalf of the Hotari and was touched by her offer to send medical help to the Hotari. First Officer Ermont was overcome with relief when Jara heeded his advice and chose to rescue the surviving Takan. He is my First Officer, I did need to listen to him. After the Resolute was hit by the bomb, Dr. Deville, uh, Duvall fully supported Jara's cautious reactions when she gave the order to lock down the lower decks. Even when facing a certain defeat, Galvin remained defiant to the end after refusing Jara's offer to send help. Ooh, ja uh, Portal 6-3 also died. He was eternally grateful when Jara transported the Taconian crystals from the vault to the Resolute. Riker, uh, af after Captain Riker arrived at the head of Starfleet Armada for the climatic battle, he was pleased when Jara sounded so grateful. Um, after Lieutenant Commander Tuvok warned Jara of the dangers of Warp Corps breach at the height of the battle against the Ophelion, he was impressed by her unshakable confidence. Ensign Calloway was suspicious and concerned when discovered Jara lurking in engineering. That was a long time ago. Sidrin, yeah, that was a long time ago, too. And now let's go to Carter and let's read where we stand with Carter's. Uh, line here. Edsler was completely devastated after Carter sacrificed himself so she so she could live, and she will never forget his words about what a great team they were. Carter's continued refusal to join her as sign of the flame will haunt Miranda the rest of her life, and she took it as a sign that their relationship simply won't meant to be after all. But see, that's not Miranda. That's the sign of the flame talking. That's not Miranda's personality. Although I guess it's a new person now, so technically it's a new person, I guess. Major Armenta understood when Carter refused to rescue Itasca. Been there. After Carter's heroics boarded the Zelda, Chuvok was pleased to find him agreeable and willing to get back to work. That was a long time ago. Westbrook, we really haven't had a lot of uh, uh, conversations there. That was, she's dead now. Uh, yeah, that was a long time ago. And Portal 6-3 was glad to hear Carter shared, shared his appreciation from the ship. Okay, we're now caught up with everybody. Let's watch this epilogue. Captain Solano used to say that Nothing ever stays the same. Entropy. An empty ship. The nature of the universe. As such, the crew of a starship can never stay the same. Things go on. But while Entropy says that order inevitably gives way to chaos. Change. There's a lot of change. has only grown stronger. more cohesive and coherent bound by our shared struggles and working together helping each other we're able to do more than we'd ever imagined we have bonded i would say the ship the crew some of our differences the captain couldn't be resolved but perhaps that too can change in time
Wonder what will ha become of Westbrook. Because he definitely wasn't happy. Will he stay on the ship? Probably not. And that might be a good good thing for him to leave the ship anyway. And then and Bedrosian, what's going to happen with her? Engage. Is she going to stay now with us? What? Oh, listen to that music, everyone. Space. The final frontier. Perfect ending. As we take our next steps into the unknown, the greatest insights that lie ahead are what we learn about each other. We might even surprise ourselves. And no matter what threats we may come upon or mysteries we face, we will not be shaken. We are stronger together. We are steadfast in our purpose. We are resolute. Now that's how you do a Star Trek game, everybody. That is how you do Star Trek. A plus, Star Trek in the bag, satisfied, am I, hooray, yes, let's go. Now I wonder if there are will be like a end credit type of, uh, sometimes these games have post credit scenes. I don't know that this one will necessarily, but I am tempted to go ahead and let the credits run out so that I can see if anything pops up at the very end. I always do this for every game just to see if there's any extra stuff there. But before I do that, I will cut that part out. You won't see that in the video and I will do a full gameplay review. So stay tuned here uh, for a couple of minutes and uh, I will cut to the review. But before I do that, big shout out to Dramatic Labs for putting this game together. Uh, great storyline, a great game. It has a few flaws and I'll mention that in the gameplay review. But overall, the story is what makes this game. It is an A-plus Starfleet Star Trek storyline. I love it. So Dramatic Labs, thank you. Thank you to all the writers, the all the developers, all the artists, all of the producers, directors, um, the game coding, just absolutely everything. Uh, and the voice actors, the voice actors, the bringing in people too from uh, Star Trek. Thank you so much. Uh, Dramatic Labs for putting this game together and creating an awesome game for Star Trek fans. And even if you're not a Star Trek fan, if you're a sci-fi fan in general, you will enjoy this game. So thank you, and I have really enjoyed this game. Like I said, I am now going to let the credits roll out to see if there's anything hidden at the end. And then I will make a cut here on the video and give you my final gameplay review of Star Trek Resurgence. All right, hello everyone and welcome back. I am Brent Justice. This is my gaming channel, Justice Gaming, and I have just finished Star Trek Resurgence. I have now played this entire game and I am recording this gameplay review after just finishing the game. And here it is. This game deserves a big A+. However, I am gonna give it a nine out of a 10, not a 10 out of a 10, and I'll explain that for my overall grade and review of the game but I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. I am, however, gonna give the storyline an A+. So the storyline is a 10 out of 10, but the game itself is a nine out of 10. So I did watch all the way through the end credits just to see if there was anything hidden, a cutscene or anything post-credit, there was nothing. It did, however, say uh, thank you, giving a special thanks to uh, Gene Roddenberry and to us, to you, to the player of the game which I uh, really enjoyed at the end of the credits there. So giving the big shout out to Gene Roddenberry for the inspiration and then to us, to the audience who are playing the game. That was a very nice touch. So this is the first game that I have played from Dramatic Labs and I wanna give them a big shout out and a big kudos and say you've, you've put together a great game uh, to all the game developers to all of the uh, writers and the artists and the uh, voice actors and everything that went into making this game. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You have made a good Star Trek game. You made a game that is at the core and essence of Star Trek. And that cannot be said for a lot of the new Trek that we have currently uh, out there right now. So this game fills in a gap that 
is missing in the Star Trek franchise. This is as true to Star Trek that you can get. This is Star Trek. So I do hope that a lot of people play this game. If you are a Star Trek fan, you should play the game. There is just no question about that. Play the game if you're a Star Trek fan. Now, if you are not and you are just a general sci-fi fan or a fan of gaming in general, then play it. You may not get a lot of the references. You may not understand a lot of the Star Trek lore. That's fine. But from a sci-fi perspective, it's also fun and engaging and has these human moments, these very uh, human and philosophical moments that are brought up, which is what Star Trek is known for. And playing this game will give you an idea of what can be experienced in the Star Trek franchise. And it can give you an insight into Star Trek itself and what Star Trek is all about. So if you not, are not familiar with Star Trek, this game can be like a primer for f learning all the greatness that you can find in Star Trek on television. So I recommend playing it even if you are not a fan. But if you are a fan, this is a must. An absolute must. Period. End of story. All right. Let's go into the different topics on this gameplay review. The first thing that I want to talk about is the plot and the story, because that is why you want to play this game, is for the plot and the story. Let's talk about that first, then we'll go into things like gameplay mechanics, and then we'll go into things like graphics and other things and other things. But let's talk about the plot and story. Okay, this game starts off with kind of a mystery and it starts off where we have this big ion storm outside of a star base. Now right from the get-go I figured that that ion storm had to play a part in the game, some kind of part in the storyline or plot of the game because it was such a big part of that introductory portion of the game, right? We had to go out there on the ship and do these things and then the storm was like attacking us. Then what really sealed the deal for me for the Ion Storm playing a part was when they said that we needed to travel to the Hattori and uh, the other people's uh, homeworlds and we needed to go there. But this Ion Storm extended all the way to where, we're, where, we, where we were going. When I heard that, I instantly knew, okay, this storm, it plays a part in the, in, in the uh, plot. I don't know how but it plays a part. And certainly enough, it did. We found out why this Ion Storm is out there, why it exists. So you have that starting the mystery, basically, of the whole thing. All right, so we end up having to meet Spock. Can you believe that? Yes, they had Spock. We meet Spock. We meet him in an interesting way. We have to fly a shuttle, that's fun. And we end up going to the Hitori, and I forgot the name of the other people already, but uh, the Elidians, that's their name, the Elidians. I have not heard of Hitori or Elidians in any other Star Trek show, so either they are a new invention for this game, or they were mentioned in some episode that I don't remember. But I want to say they're a new, a new species that we have not encountered before. So if they are a new creation for this game, again, Dramatic Labs did a great job introducing and creating a new species in Star Trek lore. That's pretty awesome. All right, so we go to this place and we find out they're having a dispute. And the reason why we're there is to help mediate the dispute. It was the Hutari who called us there to mediate the dispute, right? That's a very Star Trek thing to do. So we get there and there's a lot of dialogue that happens back and forth and a bunch of uh, mysterious things. Uh, why why all of a sudden did the Hattori have this kind of power to take over the Elidians? Because they were so much more advanced than the Hattori. Uh, the Hattori were mining dilithium for them, but somehow they rose up to power. So instantly, the first thing that went through my head, because I've seen a lot of Star Trek. I have seen a lot of Star Trek. I've seen all of Star Trek. What am I saying? A lot of. I've seen all of Star Trek. I've seen every Star Trek. <laughs> I've seen everything there is Star Trek. So instantly my mind is saying, okay, they have found an artifact. It's an ancient civilization artifact that has given them this immense power to take over the Elidians. I mean, I figured that out immediately, but that's because I know Star Trek. 
So, that's what it turned out to be. We found out it was the Takan. Wow, the Takan. Now, the Takan were referenced way back in TNG Season 1. It was an episode where we met the portal, Portal 6-3. This was an actual TNG episode. Riker took a team down, and the Ferengi were also there. The Enterprise and a Ferengi ship were under the power of uh, the uh, portal there, the energy drainer thing. It was draining the ship's power. So Riker went, uh, was on the planet to figure out all that. He made contact with Portal 6-3 and impressed Portal 6-3 with what he was saying and yeah re release their ship and portal 63 went back into hibernation i didn't think we'd ever see or hear about the takan again now that's not true technically because i believe the takan have been mentioned before in other episodes i want to say that they have because i have known about how powerful they were a long time ago from other episodes as well it wasn't just that episode there's other episodes and other there's other Star Trek lore. It might even be in Star Trek Online. Yeah, I think in Star Trek Online, there's uh, some things referencing the Takan as well. Um, I think there are little patrols that you can go do where you, like, scan old Takan technology. That's in Star Trek Online. So throughout the franchise, I have picked up on the fact that the Takan were an extremely powerful species a long time ago. And all of that. So... That wasn't a shock to me that, you know, the Takan exist, but what was cool was how they built upon the Takan in Star Trek Resurgence. They expanded on the lore of the Takan in a new and exciting way, in a very, very deep way, because we didn't get a lot of it in any other series. And so that's one thing I really like about this game, is they expanded on the Takan in such a huge way. You have all of this crystal-based technology that uh, they use. You have Portal 6-3, and boy, did they expand upon Portal 6-3. He was very, very... I mean, we only saw him once ever in the show, in that TNG show. So they took his character and really expanded upon it in Star Trek Resurgence. That's huge. And then they expanded upon the Takan Empire, and then you had this offshoot, the Scions of the Flame... Excuse me, the Scions of the Flame, which were like an evil faction... And they use a bioforming process to take over people's minds. And the technology and uh, the cartabula, uh, just they, they just really wove all of that in there extremely well. And obviously, they still had the technology draining ability. And then they had this ion storm, which was also created by them. Just a ton of stuff that just really... Uh, and that was to disrupt the warp field, so they couldn't go to warp or whatever. So there was just a lot of a lot of cool uh, exposition on the Takan Empire. I mean, a lot. Now, now I want to see the Iconians and the Takan go head to head. You know what I'm talking about? The Iconians are the other species that were uh, uh, that were there a long time ago as well. You had the Takan, which I don't know if the Takan came before the Iconians or after the Iconians. Might have been before the Iconians, but I don't know. I actually don't know that timeline. Maybe somebody could fill in the information for me. But at any rate, you have the Iconians and the Takan, and I would love to see them square off. Wouldn't that be exciting? That would be something, wouldn't it? Anyway, I'm just thinking, a future game, let's go. Sequel, let's go. So anyway... Um, yeah, all of that exposition on the Takan in this game was exceptional, and I really enjoyed that. So you're going to get a lot of lore, ex a lot of lore here, and that's really good. All right, let's move on from the Takan. The next thing we have are some very Starfleet plots happening in the game. We have the mutiny, right? Let's talk about the mutiny. We have the captain, Solano, who we at the time we don't know he's been taken over by a Takan for so long. We didn't know that. And we have to make a decision to mutiny against the captain, and we get to decide who we want to who we want to align with us to help with the mutiny. That's pretty cool too. And apparently, it's probably three options. Maybe Bedrosian would have been an option. No, Bedrosian was my option. Yeah, there were three options. I'm thinking about first commander. Okay, yeah, there were three options to choose for selecting who we wanted to help us. Ermot, I think Westbrook, and Bedrosian, right? Um, we chose Bedrosian, and I feel that was the right answer at the time in my playthrough. But 
yeah, going up against the captain, having a mutiny, and having to take the captain out. So Star Trek, right there. So that's cool. I love that component of it. And uh, and then all the little philosophical choices that we have to make along the way. Do we fire first, or do we hail them? Do we shoot phasers? Do we shoot torpedoes? Do we try to say that we're going to try to help and save the people? Or do we just say fire on them and destroy them with uh, no compassion at all? Those are very Starfleet philosophical decisions that have to be made, very human decisions, and just love that all of that was in the game. Absolutely incredible. There were a lot of those too. I can't even remember all of them, but there were a lot of little ones along the way, a lot of little things that we could have, decisions that we made along the way, right? A lot of little things. Um, so let's continue through the plot. So, uh, yeah, we, we have this huge battle at the end. They, it, it, it's neat because a lot of this is discussion and talking and diplomacy until we get to the big battle scene at the end. And then the whole last section of the game is a big battle scene. But then we're going back and forth between Jara and Carter. So it's really cool because they break that up. It's not all you know, one long battle scene. They break it up by going between Jara and Carter, so that's cool. And we get to do the stuff with Jara, making the decisions there in space of how we're going to take out the Aphelion. And then Carter, uh, he has to do stuff as well to bring down the Cartabula inside the Aphelion. So we're working on two fronts, in space and on the Aphelion. Again, that is classic. You know, you work from both ends there. That's, that's just awesome. And then you have the big battle scene, and then you find out science. Science is the way out. We're going to use these warp fields. We're going to take our warp field signature that this thing can't handle, the dissonance of the warp field. We're going to increase it. We're going to have unity between all the Starfleet ships, and we're going to all do it at the same time and overload the thing. Brilliant. So it's not just a firefight. We are winning through science and engineering. That's also very Star Trek. So we have that. There is loss at the end. We have people die and people that are bioformed. Again, that's Star Trek. We even have, we even have the funeral scene where they're all in torpedo casings, right? And uh, and I guess they have that funeral. That's all. Oh, that's that's incredible. Then it ends the game as we fly off with the Star Trek music. How awesome is that? Just beautiful, a beautiful plot. She says all the right things. She is, uh, Jara is upgraded. She gets a promotion to captain. My question now, what ship is she going to captain? Is she going to captain the Resolute? Is that now her ship or does she, is she going to be assigned to a different ship? That's the only question they left unanswered. We don't have an answer to. If there is a sequel, and I really hope there will be in the future, I would like to see it pick up from Jara and see what ship she is on, what ship she's a captain of. So that question, there's actually a lot of questions left, and so we'll talk about that here in a second. There's a lot of questions left. So the game ends with that. It flies off into the sunset, basically, and our crew is united, and we have bonded as a team, as a crew, as a ship entity. We have all bonded. The storyline is incredible. That is exceptional. I am so happy how that ended. And I love that. That was so good. This game, guys, I am so happy about this game. All right. Now let's talk about some choices and some of the consequences and some questions I have about where the characters leave off. All right. The first one is this bioforming was never able to be undone. They never found out a way to undo it. So once someone is bioformed, that's kind of it. And that's where they left off. So unless unless there is a sequel to this game and we learn that it can be undone, that's it. Uh, the original personality of these people is gone. That's pretty major and that does change how you would make decisions in the game, right? Because if you're thinking in, the, in your head, oh, we can save this person because, or we need to save this person because there's a way to undo the bioforming, so yeah, we need to save the person. That's not necessarily the case. You may be okay to shoot the person, just like in uh, 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 one of the videos, I took out, um, I took out, uh, no, it was Westbrook, Westbrook, yeah, Westbrook is, I had said earlier in my video that Westbrook, uh, what happens to him, I killed him, that's right, I forgot that I had killed him, actually, in the last video, but, 
See, that's the choice. That's the thing. If there had been a way for the bioforming to be in, been undone, then killing him, we wouldn't want to do that. We would want to not kill him. But if there was really no way that we could have ever saved anybody from bioforming, then killing him would be okay, right? Yes, maybe? Question mark? Again, it's still a life form. Think about it this way. Yes, it's a scion of the flame to con person. But it's still a life form, and you don't just kill life. You don't just kill people. You don't just kill life. So maybe we shouldn't kill these people, even if they're bioformed. Yeah, the original personality is gone, but it's still a person. It's still a person that lived 600,000 years ago. It's still a person. You don't kill them. So yeah, moral morality has to step in here. Ethics, morality has to step in, and you have to say to yourself, we still can't kill the person. Even if they have been taken over by this bioforming, we can't kill them. So then the question is raised, if there's a way to undo the bioforming ever, would it be would that be the moral thing to do? Because then you're killing the scion of the flame to con person. You're killing that personality and bringing back the original personality. Is that ethically and morally the right thing to do? Oh wow. That's really deep. Those thoughts are extremely deep, and it's those kind of thoughts, that's why I like this game, because it brings about those type of thoughts. You are thinking about that type of thing in the game. You're thinking about that, especially right now, I'm thinking about that. Yeah, we shouldn't kill them, okay, but then what if we could undo the bioforming? Is that the right thing to do? Because then you're killing the Taconian person, too. Ooh, that's tough. That's a tough one. Wow. All right, tough decisions to make there. So that makes me think, you know, then what's going to happen to Solano, right? All of these people that have been bioformed, what happens to them? Where do they go? What do they do? We need a follow-up for that. We absolutely need a follow-up for that. All right, let's go over some of my choices that I made. I chose to you to ch I chose Bedrosian to help me with a mutiny. I felt that she was the right person in my playthrough for that. Even though I didn't necessarily treat her very well the entire time. I get that. I do think that she was extremely irrational, though, to quit after I did not choose to make her to, uh, to, um, to, you know, side with her with saving the people on the affiliate or whatever. She wanted, there was some decision I had to make and it made her really angry. No, it was, oh yeah, it was destroying all the Scions of the Flames, uh, you know, crystals. Because I was not willing to commit genocide, she was angry at me and wanted to quit Starfleet. I mean, you're not a stable person if just because you don't agree with a, a uh, just because you don't agree with your captain's decision that you're going to quit Starfleet, then quit Starfleet. You're not mm, cut out to be in Starfleet. I'm sorry. If you can't handle having decisions that you don't agree with being done on the bridge from the captain, the acting captain then yeah uh go see you later bye bye you're not fit for that that's kind of how i felt about bedrosian at that point and she re re she re uh re uh, inserted reinvigorated she reinforced that's the word reinforced that for me at the very end here when she also wanted me to do something else that was against what i didn't want to do she was not cut out she, she's not cut out for Starfleet. Honestly, if she quits, I'm fine with that. Whatever. Now, Westbrook, I feel a little bad about. I did make him angry, and at the end, he was taken over by... He was bioformed, and then I guess I killed him. I did feel bad about some of those decisions with Westbrook, but again, I didn't feel that he was the right job for the right candidate for the, for the first officer. I felt Ermot really was the best person. So that's why I chose Ermot. And honestly, in another playthrough, I might still choose Ermont. I really just really feel like Ermont is the right person for the job. I, I did not feel that Westbrook was. Westbrook had been looked over for promotion or for, yeah, getting promoted to first officer. I get that. He was looked over, passed over, whatever you want to say. But that was for a reason. And the reason is he's not fit for the job. And to me, it's not about hierarchy it's not about who's next in command or next in line necessarily it's about who's fit for the job you want someone to fill the first officer role who's fit for the job 
that is a very important position and they need to be the right person, the right personality type for that position. Jara was. Westbrook was not. Ermot was. Bedrosian was not. So Ermot, I would, I would probably always choose Ermot for the first officer. I just really felt he was the right guy. That's just the way I felt. So I'm happy with that decision. There are many other decisions that I questioned that I've made in the game that I might have chose differently. And again, I think I mentioned those as I made them, as I was playing it, because I don't remember every single small one right now. There are many, many different choices I would choose for sure. And also just to see how it would alternatively play out if I had made different choices. I want to see that as well. And that's the other thing I really love about this game is it has a high replayability factor. I'm going to be able to replay this game not just once, but maybe twice, maybe three times. I'm going to be able to replay it a couple of times and make different choices and see where they lead, where those choices lead and how the people feel about me or how I make them feel. So I did probably the typical thing, which was to have a love interest with Miranda right off the bat. I think probably a lot of people did that. I feel that. I might now in a different gameplay not do that. And in hindsight, I would choose not to do that. I feel that Edsler was probably the right romantic relationship for Carter, not Miranda. So that is definitely in a different playthrough. I would try to switch the, that around as much as I can. I would I would not go down a, a relationship with Miranda. I would inf instead go down a relationship with Edsler if that was an option. So that's one difference for sure I would change right there, right? Uh, Miranda was an interesting character, but yeah. I mean, once she was taken over by the Taconi and it was no longer Miranda, even though they kept trying to tell us it was, it wasn't, right? It was not. So at that point, it was all bets off anyway. Etzler was a great person, and that was uh, the, 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 uh, the person that I would definitely choose to go down that line with for sure. Um, I really like Carter, Carter and her's relationship. Um, also, I like that we befriended that Elidian person. That was good as well. I think I might have tried to save Itasca in a different playthrough. That's the only decision with him I might have changed is to uh, try to save Itasca. But um, otherwise, I'm very happy with how our relationship with the Elidian worked out. Um, we were... Who else? Oh, uh, Cho Chovok, the uh, Vulcan in engineering. I think Carter and his relationship turned out real well as well. And I'm glad that uh, that turned out the way it did. I would probably wouldn't make any changes there either. Their relationship went out went down pretty good. Um, with Jara, I definitely think our conversations with Riker were pretty good. I think our conversations with uh, Spock were pretty good. And again, with Solano, early on, early on, he did seem odd to me, even when he wasn't taken over by a Takan. And I definitely did not agree with his decision not to contact Starfleet. Now, that was because he was Taconian at the time, but we didn't know that. So I definitely would continue to stand up to him and choose to contact Starfleet and stand up to Solano. Even in another playthrough, I would always stand up to Solano. I believe that was the right thing to do. So the mutiny thing was probably always going to happen. So those are some of my main choices that I had to make in the game. And other ones are just smaller choices or differences that I might have made in my playthrough. But giving this game a review, I would say that is what the strength of this game is being able to make those different choices and wanting to replay it. The, 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 since I do want to replay it, having this desire to replay the game is its selling point. It's, that's the selling point for selling the game as an A-plus game. It's an A-plus game, and the story is A-plus if you want to replay it to do different choices and do things differently. If you want to do that, like, sure, you can play any game once and be like, okay, yeah, that was a game, I experienced it. But if you ever want to get back into a game and say, yeah, I want to play it again, I want to play it one more time. If you ever want to play a game twice, 
then you know it's a good game. That is the mark of a good game. A good game wants you to make you come back and play it again. And that's what I see in this game. Replayability, playing it again, making different choices. And I would absolutely do that. Now, let's talk about one of the negative things about this game. Uh, we'll go back into some more positives, but we'll just talk about a little bit of negative since I'm, more, I'm in this zone of talking about gameplay choices right now. I have read a lot of comments and seen a, a lot of uh, text from people that this game is pretty much going to play out the same way no matter what choices you make. Now I can't attest to that because I've only played it once. I only have this one experience to base my opinion on. So I, I can't say that for certain, but if that is the case, if this game is always going to end the same way, then I still think it's worth it to play it again because there are relationships and things that can go differently and you can make different choices like choosing who you want to side with to, for the mutiny or choosing who you want to be first officer. There are things that Im impact the gameplay and I feel that there might have been a lot of others too but I don't know that for certain because I haven't played it twice, I've only played it once. So I definitely want to see that my, for myself and play it again. But even if that's the case, even if the game always plays out the same way, I still think there are these relationships built between the characters, uh, between you know either making people mad at you, neutral, or happy, that can result in different dialogue and a little bit of a different story. So I still think that that's worth it and fun. And I, I, th I still think that's fun. So... It really all depends how you want to play the game and what you take out of it. If you take out of this game that you're having a fun experience and you're having a good, you know, gameplay experience and you're enjoying the plot and storyline, then that's good, right? That's good, ultimately. I think in a second playthrough, I would want to play things negatively. I would want to be a bad person. I would want to be mad at everybody and insult everyone and kind of play it from that perspective, a, a complete opposite side of what I did in this playthrough. In this playthrough, I played it a very Starfleet, a very uh, traditional Starfleet kind of a role. But in a second playthrough, I would want to go the opposite. Let's say I'm from the Mirror Universe. I'm Mirror Universe Jara, Mirror Universe Carter. How would I play the game then? That would just be a fun playthrough just for the experience. And I think if I ever replayed this game, that's the first thing I would do is do it that way. And then maybe in a third playthrough, choose different options. But I think I think playing it from like the aspect of like it's the mirror universe, that could be just fun, right? Just just for fun. That would be a fun experience. So I think I'll probably do that in the future. Subscribe to the channel if you would like to see that. And that might be a playthrough that I do in the future. All right, let's talk uh, about a positive thing now. I loved the technology and Technobabble in the game. Now a lot of people might not like Technobabble in Star Trek. It can be a big thing. It can sometimes be very intense. But I actually enjoy that because I'm a nerd. I'm a straight up nerd. I love the tech stuff. I love technology and I love the science stuff and I love the engineering stuff. So for me this is right up my alley and this game did not shy away. From the techno babble it did not shy away from it and a lot of games might choose to do that they might choose to just be more action oriented and move away from do the science and engineering and technology technology side of it this game didn't shy away from that it had a good balance of action and technology so you had this um all these things you had to do with the transporter um all these different wave patterns and using the tricorder and all these different science things you had to do along the way. And it talked about the technology and it used it correctly. That's another thing. Sometimes the uh, some of the newer Star Trek stuff that you will find out there doesn't follow the technology very well. It uh, messes it up quite a bit. This game got the technology in Star Trek right. It got the techno babble right. It talked about all the right things in the right way. So I enjoyed it for that. A very positive experience from that side of it. The Technobabble, the things you had to do from the science end of it. 
the engineering end of it was just top notch a plus stuff so i definitely loved it for that and so the balance between action and the other stuff uh diplomacy or technology or battles it was all balanced very well you went back and forth between one to the other to the other and so i think this game was very balanced in terms of what it gave us we even had some third person uh, shooting sprees stuff that we had to do with the phaser we had to hide behind cover we had to dodge between cover we had to uh, move from side to side we had to shoot them with the phaser right and that third person kind of gameplay is hard to do in a game like this but they managed to put that in there and we had to we got to do that um, I think some first person might been, have been a little fun. Would have been neat if we had had a little bit of first person shooting in there as well. I think that could have been just a little extra on top of it. But uh, still, the third person part was stuff was fun. And uh, so, we, yeah, we had combat. We also had uh, flying shuttles. That was fun. The only thing we didn't have, which I might have liked to have seen, would have been a ship combat. Sure, we got to make some decisions where we had to, like, you know, choose to fire torpedoes or fire phasers and just hit one, two, or three on our keyboard. But we didn't get to fly the ship. We didn't get to control the ship. You know what I mean? We didn't get to use our keyboard or controller to move the ship around like we did the shuttle. We didn't get to, like, fly the ship and, like use our mouse to fire phasers and torpedoes that kind of would have been fun like a first person ship flying kind of thing that element might have been hard to do in this type of a game but it would have been fun right it would have been fun so i think that's the only component that might have been missing there that i would have liked to have seen but still flying the shuttle was fun um we had to uh, do a lot of dodging there and yeah move the shuttle around and fly around things so that was a lot of fun. Flying the shuttle was fun. But flying the ship, well, that would have been something, right? That would have been icing on the cake for this type of game. So let's talk about now the one of the real negatives that uh, I thought about while playing this game. Um, let's talk about the graphics. I'm a graphics guy. I love GPUs, video cards. I review video cards. Uh, I play a lot of games. I I look at games, I look at new, the new technologies that are in games, ray tracing, DLSS, all the great things that are in games, right? I, I look at all that kind of stuff and uh, evaluate it. And so when I play a game like this, my motto on my gaming channel, you'll see it in the top banner, is uh, games at maximum settings playing as the developer intended. I am a all about playing games at the highest graphics settings possible and playing as the developer intended for the full gameplay immersion of a game. I want to feel like I'm in the world, I want to feel like the game is visually stunning and I'm, I'm always all about that. This game is based on the Unreal Engine, which is a good start, a great start. The I think the Unreal Engine is really good. Unfortunately, it is Unreal Engine 4, so it's the previous version of Unreal Engine. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. There are a lot of stunning and really good-looking Unreal Engine 4 games. Absolutely really good Unreal Engine 4-based games, 100%. But this is not one of them. Straight up, right off the bat, this is not one of them from a visual perspective. This game was definitely made for the console. You can feel that. It does not have any PC specific features. It does not have any enhancements for the PC. I am playing it on the PC. That is unfortunate. The Unreal Engine 4 has a lot of potential that they did not utilize in this game. And that is a downside, a negative for me. Also, at this time, even though this game was released in May of 2023, at the time, Unreal Engine 5 was out. So they could have maybe potentially given this game a late update to Unreal Engine 5. 
Now, maybe it was just too far along in development to do that and there was no easy way to do that. Maybe they're a small studio and they could not afford to do that. Okay, I would understand that. But I will just say it is a little disappointing for a game to come out in 2023 when Unreal Engine 5 is already out. When this game came out, Unreal Engine 5 was out. There are Unreal Engine 5 games that you can play right now. Um, but this game was still based on Unreal Engine 4 and not a great implementation of Unreal Engine 4. So that brings it down a little bit for me and that's why I gave this game a 9 out of 10. I knocked it a point for the graphics. I thought the graphics were not very good. Number one, the texture quality was bad. It could be a lot better, especially on the PC. The PC is a great platform for something like a high texture quality pack where they could have given us high texture quality, uh, really, really, you know, high resolution textures on the PC. Even that one thing alone would have separated the game from the console version and made it look better on PC. So that's one area, the textures were bad. The shadows were bad. They were not good shadows. They were bad, they sparkled, they had um, a lot of dithering to them. If you notice, there's a lot of dithering on things, especially when you watch people on the view screen. There was a lot of dithering. Riker's face was like smearing up across the screen. There was a lot of dithering there. And the shadows also had that. And the specular lighting had that at times. Um, yeah, that just wasn't very good in the game. Uh, one component that this game could have utilized and they could have had this feature in an Unreal Engine 4 game was ray tracing. This is the perfect game for ray tracing. Because it's not a fast action moving game, it is a slow, a slow paced game this is the perfect game to have ray tracing they could have used global illumination ray tracing which would have really made the game look incredible they could have done uh, ray tracing for reflections and they could have done ray, ray tracing on the shadows and on the uh, ambient occlusion if they had had even if they had just had ray tracing for the shadows and ambient occlusion that alone would have made the game look better Reflections would have added a bonus to that, but then the biggest thing would have been global illumination. If they had done ray trace global illumination, game would have looked phenomenal. So the lighting there really could have been improved with ray tracing in this game. This would have been the perfect game for it because uh, it's a slow, a slow paced game where visuals would have been everything in this game. So I would have liked to have seen that. Uh, so those are my gripes. Uh, also, I oh yeah, the polygon count that was a little low as well. I uh, definitely noticed it on the characters, definitely uh, on some of the other things. Polygon count was pretty low in the game. Again, you can tell the game was made for console. I understand that. They could have enhanced it for PC. I would have loved to have seen that. Again, they could be a small studio and just can't afford that. So if there's a sequel, I hope they improve upon that. I was playing this game with a GeForce RTX 4090 here in 2023. So I had the best performance that I could get and the highest quality settings that I could get and that was the experience. That was what it was. So I believe they could have done a better job there for the graphics. Now let's talk about the sound and audio. The sound and audio were pretty good in this game. You have the classic Star Trek music, the classic Star Trek audio, and it's pretty engaging. I also did not have a problem with the uh, the voice acting. I thought that was great and delivered really well, just like I was watching a TV show. I thought that the sound effects were very good. Phasers and all the torpedoes and everything sounded great. So actually, I uh, give high marks for the sounds in this game. Sound, sound design was very good. Very good on the sound design. Um, and again, a big shout out to all the voice actors who came in and voiced for the game because that was just awesome and uh, yeah that was just done really well so all the dialogue and dialogue options was really incredible so I would 100% like to see a sequel for Star Trek Resurgence I hope they do a second game we need a sequel to this a direct sequel I loved the ability to play between Jara and Carter so it's not just like you're playing one character the whole time, which might have been boring. But they kept it not boring by playing as two characters. So you have these one on one side of the ship, you are on the lower decks. So that's awesome. You're playing as lower decks. 
and then on the other end of the ship you're at the you're on the command staff you're the commander of the ship so you're playing both ends of the ship and i think that's a great dichotomy not a lot not a lot of games have that not a lot of star trek games have that where you get to play from one end to the other end like that so it's very cool moving between those two sides of the ship and i think you get to experience the ship in a different way on one side you've got the head brass you're dealing with on the other side of the ship you have the lower decks and you're having to take orders instead of give orders so that is very exciting and i just really love that dichotomy of playing between the two sides of the ship that's just really exciting to me and i'm glad they did that it kept the game from being boring so if we have a sequel in the future i would love to see the sequel pick up from jara and i would love to see what ship she becomes captain of is it the resolute still are we on a new mission and then what are they going to do to replace carter can't believe that he's taken over or bioformed at the end but i guess he's not dead he's alive he's just taken over or bioformed so i guess we'll have to have a second person to play through but that would that would be a lot of fun i would love to uh, see where they take the game in a second version so here are my suggestions my thoughts and opinions for a sequel to star trek resurgence number one pick up where jara left off find out what ship she is going to captain and where her her story is going to go i would love to see a, a continuation there i would love to know or hear in dialogue as i play the game what happened to bedrosian what happened to uh all of these people that were bioformed Miranda, well, I guess, is Miranda? Miranda's dead. Yeah, she's dead. So I guess it would be Solano. It would be Carter for sure. We got to know about what happened to Carter. I would love to know what happened to these bioform people after the fact. So I'd love to see that. I would love to just really have continue an engaging story. You did a big thing with the Takan. That was cool. Maybe we need to dial it down now a little bit for the next one. Maybe the next one can be about exploring. Since this one was about diplomatic resolution and defeating an old empire, the next one could be back to exploring. Maybe we're out in deep space. And that's where I'd like the next one to take place. We're out in deep space. We're on a long mission. And something happens way out there while we're in deep in space and we learn something new. We're on an exploring mission. Let's get back to exploring in Star Trek. That's where I'd like the next game to head. An exploration type of deal. Let's go there. Because we've done the diplomacy, we've done the combat, we've done the defeating a, an ancient race in this game. And the next one we need to do exploring. And of course you can have combat still. And you can have all those other things. But we need to do exploring. We need that back. So that would be my suggestion. I would also suggest to the developers... Since you're on the Unreal Engine and that's what you're using for this game, continue that with the next game, but upgrade to Unreal Engine 5. Let's go with Unreal Engine 5. Bring in all the beautiful things that Unreal Engine 5 has, like uh, the, the, Lumen, the, luminous, the luminous thing it has, the nanite, uh, the, um, the, all the ray tracing. It, it uses the luminous, luminous or luminous engine for its ray tracing, but use that and use nanite for... Um, Nanite would be great for creating like really big worlds. Like let's say we do an exploration mission in the game and we have to beam down to planets and we're like exploring civilizations or something on the planets. They could use Nanite to build like really big worlds and planets that we have to explore. That would be really good to use on Real Engine 5 for. They could have uh, they could they could they could move move that into a real big direction there. That could be a lot of fun. So uh, upgrade the graphics engine, include those new technologies in the game for the PC, make it PC focused and uh, do all that. And I think that could be very exciting. And I would love to play a second sequel, a sequel to Star Trek Resurgence. So that would be a whole lot of fun. I wanna see that in the future. Like I said, I have enjoyed this game if you haven't figured it out by now, I am a huge Star Trek fan. 
I have seen every Star Trek series, you know, TOS, the movies, TNG, DS9, Voyager, Enterprise, the TNG movies. I've even seen the rebooted stuff. I have seen the JJ Trek movies. I have seen Discovery, Sad Face. Let's not go into that right now. I have seen uh, all of Picard. I have seen uh, all of uh, St uh, Strange New Worlds. I have seen, and one of my favorites is uh, the Lower Decks cartoon. I've seen all of that. So I am a huge fan of Star Trek. I've, I, I've been watching the entire franchise since I was born, basically. And I know my history. I know this franchise well. And so I am coming from this gameplay review of Star Trek Resurgence and this game as a whole from an educated opinion. Yes, all of what I'm saying is opinion. It is my opinion. But I'm coming at it from an educated opinion. I know what I'm talking about when I have that opinion. So I definitely want to see more of that. I want to see more Star Trek games like this. This is traditional Star Trek stuff. And I want to see more of that traditional Star Trek stuff. I also play Star Trek Online. Been playing it since it launched 10 years ago. So I have been uh, really enjoying that game uh, over 10 years now. Uh, came out in 2009. I've been playing it since then. So I, I, I know my Star Trek. And I can say that this game is your traditional Star Trek. This is what you want out of a plot and a story from Star Trek. And that's pretty much where I want to leave this gameplay review. If uh, you are only watching this review and you have not seen my complete playthrough of this game, I do have a complete playthrough on this channel. And that is where this video is being recorded onto. And I will cut this video out as a separate video that will also be shown. But this comes from just finishing Star Trek Resurgence. So check out that playthrough on my channel if you have not. I think it's pretty cool. And I have really enjoyed my time and just want to say thank you to everybody. And I mean everybody who has watched these videos on my channel. Thank you for giving me your time to watch me and spend your time with me watching this. I appreciate it so much. Uh, thank you so much for watching it and thank you so much for leaving comments. I do read every comment. I have read every comment. I have talked about a few of those on these videos. But I will continue to read them after this game is all the way published. So thank you for that. And for any future people watching this playthrough or watching this gameplay review, also thank you for watching these videos. And I appreciate it. I hope to have more stuff like this on my channel. It is a general gameplay channel. I play games of all genres, of all games, not just Star Trek. This is not a Star Trek only channel. It is just so happens that I am a Star Trek fan and enjoy Star Trek, so uh, from time to time I do have Star Trek things like this on the channel because I enjoy that, but I also have other game genres and other game playthroughs because I am just a game enthusiast at heart. I am a technology enthusiast. I am an enthusiast. <laughs> so that is where I come from, and I have things like this on my channel other games as well so make sure to check all of that out and if you want to see more of this type of thing more of these games definitely leave a like on this video and subscribe for more so at that I will say thank you all for watching live long and prosper <laughs>